averages almost 24 points a game, eight rebounds, has led this team in every way possible since Bryce Hopkins went down on the third with that ACL tear. And the opening tap is controlled to the home team. Our officials for tonight's game, the veteran crew in the Big East, John Gaffney, Ron Groover, and Clarence Armstrong. Well, you got to keep an eye on what Providence is going to do, how they're going to play the ball. They don't double team at all. It'll be interesting when that ball gets low what they do. Newton with the late adjustment to get it to clean. Shot clock is down to two as he makes his drop step maneuver. Can't get it to fall. Good defense by Oduro. Quick outlet to Floyd Jr. who rolls right into Spencer. Take your opportunities, Timmy. If you have fast breaks, your Providence. UConn so good defensively in the half court. The dump down to Oduro. That jump hook is usually pretty solid for him. Does not get that one to go. It's a different shot from the baseline with the jump hook than it is in the middle of the paint. Spencer with the teardrop, and it's 2 0 Huskies. I don't know if there's a more valuable portaler in college <laughs> basketball this year. I know some people would would argue LJ Cryer at Houston, maybe Hunter Dickinson at Kansas, but boy, Cam Spencer's so important to this UConn team at both ends. Well, I was just with his old coach, Steve Feigl, another UConn man, as you know, the coach of Rutgers, and he certainly would say that yeah. based on what he's seen from his protege. That high off the window. That is textbook Devin Carter. He just wills his way to buckets. Well, that, that allowed, the reason he got that shot off is because Oduro can get to mid-range so Klingon doesn't want to go down and help right away but you're gonna have to help on Carter I don't care who's guarding him in a white uniform Castle now that's the young man that probably has a higher ceiling for greater success this year than just about anybody on the yeah, floor I agree with that and, and still finding different facets of his game what what can be good at this level uh, a lot of them if not all of his qualities in high school were great. This level's a little different. Lloyd going crossover against Newton. Tough shot. Pulled down by Spencer. There he is again, right there in the painted area. He'll search and find the lane. Smart, because... He's not known as a three-point shooter, so he creeps in, but Cam Spencer sees that. You know, if he if he stays out, then maybe you're you're guessing what he's gonna do, but because he creeps in, he's got that mid-range floater. Really important that Oduro get Klingon away from the basket. He's got quick feet. That's twice now. The jump hook hasn't gone. Look at Floyd sneak in. Count it and a foul. Beautifully done. That little space that was created solely because Klingon had to close out on Oduro. Yeah, Corey Floyd Jr. was coming into his own last season under Ed Cooley towards the end of the year. This year, a little bit slower start, but because he earned the minutes with his play all over the court and also Bryce Hopkins going down, he has an opportunity to make plays like that, and that's what he does really well. He outworks guys. The Flyers have lost three consecutively without Hopkins, and now they have a chance for a four-point play after the offensive rebound. Maybe five if Oduro takes the three. Pierre will. And that one's going to go the other way as Oduro goes over the back and picks up the personal. That's good basketball, though, by the Friars. Drive, you kick, shot fake up top. You see the Klingon respects Oduro, puts it down one more. Got to knock that shot down in the corner but once Klingon has position inside Timmy you gotta let him get the rebound you don't want a cheap one Jim English said today the coach and the, one of the youngest ever to be a head coach already at George Mason and now just turning 35 here he said our guys have got to play exemplary basketball it's got to be their best game for just about everyone individually for us to do it as a team in the passing lane Oduro with the pilfer they have to be efficient they have to be aggressive Oh, beautiful roll by Oduro, and the bounce pass injury from Pierre. It's so talented, but both kids, and the pass by Pierre on the money. But Josh Oduro has really been one of the bright spots in all of college basketball. Yes. Coming as a big from a mid-major to this level, not easy to do. By the way, as you see, a 
contact and a foul spotted underneath. I think they may have gotten Pierre. What we have found out is that a lot of these mid-majors should have been major guys to start with. Yeah, and some of them just, they're under the radar a little bit. Maybe they're, they're undervalued. Foul was on Jaden Pierre, and there's a clear out. And the foul against Klingon. And a little wolf of afterwards from the Bristol native as he heads to the sidelines. Tied at a half dozen. They weren't in and coming off of eight days no. rest. It, it, the schedule, as much as teams change, and you know, it, it's hard to compare this team to the la this year's team to last year's team. The schedule is so important, and I think that has been a huge benefit for UConn. Now, look, you're in a game now, but. We remember what they went through last season in Big East play, and Purdue may be feeling some of that right now as well. Maduro working against Samson Johnson. There's a quick pass out, and Carter will step back over Spencer. Beautiful work by Floyd again. Look at him. He's a human pogo stick, the guard down there. He is a workhorse. He really is. He's so athletically gifted. You saw the, the jumping ability there, and game just gets better and better every single night. By the way, speaking of uh, Purdue being in overtime tonight with Northwestern, they went to overtime the last time they played. Right. Castle. What a job Chris Collins has done. Oduro beams down the rebound, and here come the Friars the other way. It'll stop and go work by Floyd. Carter with the dump down to Oduro. Too deep. Too deep for him, Timmy. We talked about this today, a shoot around you and I, and a little bit with with coach English he's a little undersized but he's not playing against Shaq at least not now Donovan Klingon's out of the game but he's playing against guys that I think he can navigate around use his quickness we saw him get Klingon in the air from the top of the key but when he was in the game there you see him get Johnson in the air so he's a smart player even though he's undersized and he's a veteran he's been around he's seen it all he lets the game come to him it was really efficient almost as Efficient as Klingon was against Xavier. Klingon went 8 of 9 the other night, and Oduro was 8 of 10 in the game against Georgetown. And he can do this. This is big. You, you can make free throws to me. That, that as a big, boy, you're right. That, that's all the difference in the world. Young man that could have gone anywhere in the country. English is so happy he came over with him <laughs> from think? George Mason. And this is now an 8 nothing run for the underdogs, and they lead by four, and those are the five on the deck for Connecticut. Diara has just checked in. Newton running the curl. He's been unreal this year. That one goes crying off the front iron. Cleared by Oduro, trying to get a cheapie. Out to Carter in traffic. I love the no call. Look at that defense by Carter. Keeping it alive, it's out of bounds to Providence. I love the no-call by John Daphne, right on top of it. You know, I don't think we give our refs enough credit for being on the spot. Now, yes, they have to be in their lanes, and they have to have open looks, meaning a clear view of the ball. But to get down the floor, get to an, an area, John Daphne was on top of that. Most people in the building probably either wanted to travel or a charge. But you don't always have to blow your whistle, and you talked about it. When you have a veteran crew, this is the game, I think, that, that it's important having a crew like this a part of. Ticket Gaines is out there wearing the number zero, the transfer from Tennessee. And look at that. Floyd takes it right back after losing it. Everything but the finish as it lingered on the rim. Another steal. This one by Duell. Number three in black. I would have liked for Garway to use that left. You know, <laughs> like young people, sometimes you got to be uncomfortable in practice, and that's trying to do things you can't do. You don't want to. Be in that situation, not be able to make a left-handed layoff. Look at those turnovers. Already four committed in just six minutes' time for Connecticut. Odoro gets that wow. nice little fall away to go down. Like, uh, am I going to date myself if I say Hakeem Olajuwon? <laughs> Indeed. Wow. They call a little dream shake yeah. action going on there. Shimmy there, soft. <laughs> You realize uh, you lost all the Gen Z's on that. The dream shake was actually what they called the move. Something yeah. tells me I had a couple more than you, Tim. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> You're catching up. There's the work on the offensive glass for Caravan. And that ends the run for Providence.
It's the Huskies draw the win four. That was a 10 nothing spurt by the road team before that bucket. Carter, he is perpetual motion. Look at that. Just stays with it. He has worked his way into becoming a possible lottery pick. That kid is so special. He really has. You know, he, he if there's a, a player playing better than him, not just in this conference, but in the country right yeah. now, I'd love to see it. There can't be more than three or four. You could argue that uh, Newton has been one of those guys Absolutely. for Connecticut. A, a definite player of the year candidate in my view. That one goes short again, and here's Carter corralling it again. Their defense has been outstanding on those dribble drives by UConn. I think what Devin Carter does as well as anything is he finds spots to rest because he exerts so much energy and you don't want to come out of the game. You don't want him out of the game. Maduro working on Johnson. A quick double comes after the bounce and Johnson rejects him with six on the shot clock. Jaden Pierre will check in for Carter right before the television timeout at 12 minutes. Oh, really nice job. Cam Spencer just trying to gum some things up. Give a different look to Oduro down low, but once you're under the basket, Samson Johnson just too big, too long. Boy, just to your point, Devin Carter already fatigued. <laughs> he leaves it out there. Oh, he really does. Samson Johnson brings it down. That's the one guy they need to get going as well. That ticket gains. They are suffocating Newton every time he gets it. Someone is in his chest. Trying to work the dribble handoff, and Duell just would not allow it. There's Castle for three. Oduro with a great block out. You know, in the scouting report, that's the guy you want to beat you from behind the arc with this lineup on the floor for UConn. Pierre goes reversal and gets it to fall. Man, they are clicking on all cylinders the Friars you know the difference with Providence and any other team that that you've seen in this building against UConn over the years is they know who they are they, they're not trying to be UConn they, they are playing within themselves already Newton with a nice pump fake takes it in count it and a foul Just two points in the last six minutes before that one. It's going to be tough for number one tonight. And does not possess the <laughs> level of talent to deal one would think with Klingon. Now, he's out of the game at this point. Uh, Klingon, but uh, Oduro means so much to this team. I mean, that, that allows really the play of, of Devin Carter to flourish. Yeah. His mere presence yes. out there. But now Rich Barron gets a chance, the youngster for Providence and Garway Duell. We talked about him earlier. Where's the leadership and the scoring coming from with this unit? That's the question for Providence. Barron is a very physical guy. There's a nice pass again. Counted on a foul. Beautifully done on that dime being dropped by Jaden Pierre. Raphael knew right where to go with it. I've really enjoyed watching the, the maturation process in, in real time of Jaden Pierre. Again, just understanding you draw a couple guys, keeping it simple. And I don't normally like those bounce passes in, in close quarters to seven footers. But if it has enough zing and it pops back up into their hands, you know that's a it's a good play. It's a it's a it's a confident play that he made there. In that case, it was really the only pass he could make. Yeah, right? you're right. We've seen a lot of young guards go shoot that floater when they see help coming. Yeah. That was the right play. Caravan with a beautiful ball fake to get past Castro and the deuce. And he comes down gingerly on his ankle. Looks like he turned that right ankle as he hit the deck, and he is in pain. Well, that's where you want to see ticket gains if you're Providence. Take a charge. He was in position. And then decided, I, I don't want to take the contact. Let me jump in the air. It's like he's trying to walk it off, but I don't know that he will. Take a look here. So the swing comes, and then for a second, in your right side of your screen, and then he moves his feet, Gaines. you got to stand in, give your body up. Caravan, take a look. Right there, turns that right ankle. 
means uh, Samson Johnson will have to come back on the floor to keep the size factor in there to deal with Castro, who just shy of seven feet, as, as Donnie mentioned. I had a lot of those as a player, Tim, and, and there's such a, a, a fine line between you take that shoe off and tape it as quick as you can. Don't even take your tape off, or you just you leave it and, and try to see if you can bounce around on it. And tomorrow's a really bad Tomorrow, one. Yeah, tomorrow, no, no question. Five-point lead for Providence. A little concern inside Tampa Pavilion as number one is being challenged, at least in the early moments. A lot of dribbling up here. That's a carry. Yeah, it sure much, is. Too much dribbling. Mm -hmm. I, I always believe when, when a... Any guard has to dribble the ball more than six times to start an offensive set, Tim. Nothing good's going to happen Listen, after that. As, as someone that loves the history of the game, I'm really happy to see Ron Groover make that call. Yeah. You know, I really am because you just don't see it called enough. Yeah, that carry. We could see it called so many more oh. times. You don't want it to be an overdrive, but on occasion, when it's that obvious, call it. I was talking about cleaning the game up. Yep. That game, you keep getting called for it, that cleans the game up. Sure does. Castle looking for Spencer cutting Newton back inside the paint area in those quick hands of Providence. Uh, that's going to be one that's going to be an over and back. Another turnover here by the Husky. I like to think I get, keep guilting you into eating all that red meat. <laughs> and, and you slowed down, you stopped, and now you, you're down 50, 55 pounds. <laughs> Look, you, yeah, you criticize and you... You can hammer someone enough, they'll clean it up. I'm down to, uh, I can't drive 55 now. <laughs> Love it. Well, here's a young man that you know all too well about. Jalen Stewart. Hails from Garfield High, Seattle, Washington. Second cousin, I believe. Is that right? That's right. I think it is. Tony Marshall, of course, hails from there. Now Jim Calhoun got him. Who knows? Okay. Oh, gosh. Pierre with a stop and pop from three. Off the front iron. Now, Providence, uh, eight field goals, all eight in the paint. Newton for three. The iron unkind, and it's hauled down by ticket games. And those are shots we, we see Newton hit. You know, he just sparks him with those at times. Carter just knows where his teammates are on the floor. Uh, in the passing late, Spencer, that's his specialty. Cam Spencer has really helped this team defensively this year. Yeah, I think he, he gets, uh, you know, the, the due credit for knocking down shots, being tough offensively, can play multiple positions, Cam Spencer. But I don't think he gets enough credit for what he does defensively. It's a great positional defender. Look at that overplay and a lazy pass. Samson Johnson slams it home. And, and that'll get the crowd involved. And it adds to what UConn does. You won't see Donovan Klingon doing that. You put Samson J Johnson in the game and using that ability. Carter for three. That was way off the mark. Castle sneaks out again. Good recovery by Floyd, but he's being posted up now. Look at that fighting through that screen by Barron. Jump stop Castle and a foul inside. God, I would love to see Jalen Stewart shoot that ball. It's they're so aggressive. You get so deep and you throw it out. But here, this is a great anticipatory play by Samson Johnson using the length, timing, and going up to finish strong. So athletic. You talk about a guy whose stock has gone through the roof this year in terms of you know his professional prospect or prospectus if you will he's one of those guys no doubt. NBA scouts are loving what they see from Samson Johnson I'm talking today at the shoot around with Danny Hurley I asked him about you know losing Jackson who was a kind of a glue guy for this Connecticut team in so many ways you loved him yeah. as a player Gosh. kind of a as good as he was his stats never really mattered he was a really a glue yeah. guy yeah. I asked him about um, how he was able to fill that void and he said the combination of uh, both the job Spencer has done and, and the emergence of Stefan Castle yeah a combination of those two has really helped with that void yeah that could have been there with the loss of Jackson very skilled obviously I think the defense of, of Steph Castle is better than anyone expected he's got the body for it and then obviously Cam Spencer knows what to do on offense 
lead is down to two. Connecticut makes its run. There again is the defense. Castle with the deflection. Spencer gives it back to Castle. And the foul will go against Barron. Well, that is a lot of girth to run into. To Barron is one of the bigger combo guards you might run into. Look, uh, uh, and Steph Castle's no shrinking violet either. I mean, <laughs> look, this is young, young man strength. <laughs> that is just that collision, boy. But you're right, Barron's got a body on him. Castle missed six games with a knee injury, underwent a minor procedure, but Stefan, a five-star recruit, McDonald's All-American, and a guy that, according to Danny Hurley, came in probably more prepared physically and emotionally than any other freshman he's ever recruited. That says a lot. It, it really does. It says a lot about his high school it says a lot about aau and you know aau and high schools get such a bad rap these days because these young people come in with such bad habits they don't have the ability to know how to work hard though that's a breath of fresh air at step castle he only gets one of the two there's an 18 17 game now providence clinging to this lead odoro back on the floor with the two fouls so Kim English is now counting on him to play with a great deal of intelligence. Beautiful skip pass. There's an opening near the 10 now. Floyd trying to shoot use cup fakes. And finally a three-second violation. Got to shoot it. Well, after you've beaten a team of the Big East by 43, the curtain call can be difficult. Providence is going. They could have beaten anybody that night. It is yeah. really hard to follow that up. And I think a lot of times it's just about the schedule. Where did your game fall? What are the biorhythms that particular day? And Providence came in with a lot of purpose here. And uh, they're playing exactly the way Ed, Ed Cooley would have prescribed. That's for sure. The toughness has been on display. And Kim English is certainly known for that as well. well they say what they want. That, that Georgetown Providence game, Ed Cooley left yeah. Kim English with a nice pro. Sure did. He really he set sure it did. beautifully for him. Hard for, hard for Providence fans to understand that now, but they will. No question. They will. They will. Spencer checking Carter. This is a great matchup right here. Strength on strength. Oduro steps out for the three ball. Oh, oh yeah. nylon. And that ends the drought for no threes. Providence had gone three and a half minutes without a bucket to boot. And it's 21 to 17. I think you can make the argument that Josh Oduro has been just as impressive as yep. Devin Carter's been these last six games. No doubt about it. And it'll be more impressive if he can go 640 without committing a third foul. Carter, and there's Oduro again. Uh-oh, it's going the other way. And that is just what you did not want to see, but I suspected we might. Yeah, I don't like the call. I thought there should have been a call before that on Devin Carter, and then that would have negated the push by Oduro. And this is this is a real tough situation. I, I, you know, I think there was a hit on the head and on the body. I think this would have been never the, happened. I think it may have been the push. It first, was, no, yeah. no, it was Samson definitely the Johnson. push. I yep. agree with that that call. Right. But if initially Devin Carter had gotten a foul call, yeah. that foul would have never happened, which right. I thought should have been the right call. But Oof. he sits down with nine points, six boards, and now three fouls. Just and as that you is say, a real dilemma. So the, the the broadcaster jinx is real and alive <laughs> because yeah. of Big Daddy B. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the jinx, but because no, it was no, a copy no. point. <laughs> Spencer now working on Dual. And he gives it up. Well, we heard Kim English say you give him space on the perimeter. That's the one guy they want to beat them, Steph Castle from out there, but he's got to keep shooting. How about that pick from Samson Johnson? <laughs> How about Barron will pick up the foul. Castle almost got it through the hoop. And listen. Samson Johnson may have gotten away with more than a moving pick right there. I mean, that was a, a little body block right there. Look at it. <laughs> at good hand initially by Rich Barron, but this is what I don't understand. How guards turn into shot blockers all of a sudden at different times of the game. Just stay on the ground. Stay on the floor. 
I mean, nothing good happens as you're a guard underneath the basket, jumping in the air, trying to block a shot, especially on a guy like the size of Castle. So Rich Barron, a youngster from St. Ignatius out of Chicago, will pick up St. Ignatius, picks up the foul. And Castle at the free throw line. And this is when a guy like Rich Bear needs to summon some professionalism. <laughs> he needs to dial it up and say, okay, I'm getting an opportunity. I need to stay on the floor. It's hard for young guys at times to, to understand you know, a new program, different level. How do I stay effective and aggressive when I'm in foul trouble? Castle has struggled with his three-point shooting as well as an collective 8 of 31 coming in, but he does so many other things well. Particularly on this end of the floor. Working on Carter now. Gains from B. Run down by Spencer. Length of the floor to Castle. Great defensive work. What a recovery by Ticket Gaines. Just a simple ball fake maneuver, and when it happened, Dual just lost his dribble. Opportunity blown that time. Yeah, just maybe going a little bit too fast. Again, young people sometimes they get ahead of themselves just a little bit. And you expand so much energy on the defensive end. Looks like Caravan has made his way back from the locker room. And that's why the crowd is reacting. Tom Moore, one of the assistants over there, happy to see him as Caravan lets him know he's ready to go. It's Willis Reed esque. It was. It young was. people Google Willis Reed. <laughs> <laughs> Carter <laughs> comes down with the rebound. Well, we'll allow you, you know. Keeping it in the family. <laughs> Duell made it his mind, didn't he? He was going to launch that time. Just too much playing around with the basketball. Oh, yeah. He finds Castle, who went to the top of the Castle right there. And the Huskies with nine. Kind of shooting 40%. Providence is at 38. So it's, it really has been a rubber match in terms of what they're doing defensively. You know what this tells me? Not necessarily bad offense, Timmy. It tells me it's just great job with the scouting report and everyone buying in and understanding it on both sides. Nothing is going to come easily when driving to the bucket. This is old line Big East basketball tonight. Beautiful dribble drive. Right to a wide open wing jumper that falls. And it was a thing of beauty. And seven now in the game for Floyd. And Devin Carter attracts so much attention. You have to respect his drive. But guys have to be ready with their hands up. Ready to shoot it. Newton. A little mano a mano between those two guards. Both player of the year candidates as we touched on in the Big East. 24-22. Pierre against Caravan and he's rejected. Spencer with a rejection. And the loose ball run down by Caravan. For three. Hello. How do you do? What does he bring? He brought it. Ankle looked okay there. Their first three pointer. After taping it up, he lit it up. Carter, beautiful pass. Just. Just magnificent to ticket games. Just such a just a, a, a phenomenal all-around player. Handles the ball. Great instincts. Like, just, it's just such a, a, a high basketball IQ. Spencer from downtown. Two threes in a row for UConn. It took long enough. But once they start going through, look out. They're on their feet as the Huskies take the lead by a deuce. Carter 
using his body inside. Well, he almost got that one to go. What a tough shot. Out of bounds. Last touched by UConn. Devin begging for a call. Could not get it. It says a pin down or pin away. Cam Spencer, he and Devin Carter, two of the best at trying to draw those fouls behind the arc. Didn't get it there, but let's try. 11-5 UConn run. Since Oduro got that third foul. That really did change. First of all, getting the early two. But then when English rolled the dice to get him in there, that third was devastating. Up against the clock, a pull-up baseline, and that was a tough look by Ticket Games and the Buffalo, New York star by way of Tennessee and George Mason. Yeah, that, to me, that's the hardest shot in basketball. Is. That 12, 10 to 12 footer along the baseline. Sort of a Malik, the late Malik Seeley yeah, shot. Yeah, right that's there. what it looked like. That's an old Big East uh, uh, nugget. Big East, great. Indeed. Well, Newton got away with getting his chicken wing out there a little bit. And uh, does draw the foul on the other end. Tristan's stepping up now uh, in terms of image by getting away with that, but he did. <laughs> in the one and one now, you see Odoro sitting down as Castro picked up his second. And he uh, needs to keep that number at two in the remaining 118. Providence is in a lot of trouble at that time with their bigs. I think it's interesting as we see these teams go back and forth. We show you Josh Oduro on the bench over there. You know, Donovan Klingon has played four minutes. You know, it, it, we're, yeah. we're, we're talking about foul trouble for Oduro, but Donovan Klingon at times, he's got two fouls as well. Yeah. So bigs when you play in this faster paced right. game you yeah. have to know how to stay on the floor and to uh, and to the credit of UConn though because they're such a complete team as our friend Casey Jacobson said before the game they can play yeah. without their bigs given the matchup they've got so much in their arsenal need to go small they can go small wow yeah Going the other way with a player control foul. Well, again, just out of control, young guy trying to do a little bit too much. Some over dribbling, and is 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 the elder statesman for Providence is going to have to. One of them is going to have to say, "Listen, you, you got to move that basketball, make a quick move to the hoop, straight line." But right now, UConn is figuring it out. This is what I call UConn. They're, they're, they have fungibility, Timmy. They they can. They can adjust, they adapt, they can switch. That's you, you pull one guy out, you put the next one in, and they don't lose a step. That's that fungibility, I call it. Yeah. Now, Duell reached in that time to pick up the foul, and it's probably a good thing he did because the next line of defense was going to be the big fella, and that would have been his third. So, Newton gets to the strike. And normally I would say if we're, you know, a Providence team down Bryce Hopkins, they have played six games now, seven, six and a half without him. This is where they want to be. This is how they want to be playing. But when you're playing against UConn, we've seen them have blowouts, but we've also seen them win close games. So I'm not so sure. This is not a situation of a pig and slop where sometimes a pig wants to be there. You got two animals that love playing this way or can adapt playing this way a year ago at this time and when connecticut had gone through their struggles well, I, I remember this vividly we're talking about newton now as a potential player of the year yeah. this time a year ago and we were looking for chinks in the armor so yeah. to speak with this team yep. newton was the guy people thought might be the liability yes. it because he wasn't a pure point guard remember that yes now all of a sudden he's one of the best players in the league. that's right carter that's an offensive foul, and he's upset about it, but he clearly lowered the shoulder there. He's pleading his case to Ron Gruber. But he definitely did the shoulder. That's pretty, pretty good flop to go with it. That's great defense, though. You're, you're yep. squared up. You're, you're yep. chest to shoulder. Yep. You're, you're taught to fly, and he did, but that was a good call. But that's what we're talking about with Steph Castle. Yep. He's just he's playing beyond his years. And the timeout taken by Connecticut. 
10 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Getting my potassium, but <laughs> see him standing up behind the backboard. It's kind of hard to focus. There they are. Yeah. Hard to focus. They look a little bit like the corn stalks in Iowa. <laughs> they do. Yep, yeah, they really do. <laughs> Castle has to give it up. Only two on the clock. Newton's got to pump it. And that's an over-the-back foul by Caravan. Didn't need that one. Well, it's been such a great defensive battle. No player in double figures. Neither team has reached 30 points. 9.3 remaining and a last look coming for the Friars. That's a tough one because Caravan was already off of the ground before Corey Floyd Jr. jumps. It's going to go up, folks. They decide to use a foul here on the way in. Spencer reaches in with 3.3 left on the clock. When you had one to give, so good strategy there. Now, if you're UConn, you want this pass to be going away, Timmy, away from the hoop. Maybe look for a curl, some curl action if you're Providence. Three seconds, got to go. Dual from downtown. And that'll do it for half number one. They trailed most of the way. But managed through their own defensive effort. The pull. Feeling good to come back in and knock down a three. But Alex Caravan, the, the one thing they don't hear a lot about him is he's a tough kid. You know, he really is a tough, tough kid. He wants to win, and sometimes mentally when you say you're okay, you're okay. Now tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you'll be feeling it, but it's all about right now. Klingon is also back on the floor. Let's see how long he stays out there. His minutes were impacted greatly as well. And wow. by the way, he picks up a foul as Oduro. That'll be number three on him. So Klingon with those limited minutes, and they may be limited yet again after that, his third foul on the ball thing. Odoro just went right to his chest. Yeah, Klingon's got to understand that you're the tallest player on the eastern seaboard. <laughs> you don't need to jump <laughs> to block a shot. You're the biggest human out here. Just stand hands straight up, especially when you're in foul trouble. It's a tough one. Now the decision to keep him out there, I think, probably tells you a little something what Danny's thinking tonight. It may not be a game where a lot of minutes will be played by Donovan anyway. So he's going to keep him out there. And Oduro, that's rare for him to miss both. 81% free throw shooter, the big fellow. And he comes up dry to open the second half. And he could be thinking Oduro has three fouls as well. Yeah. Klingon. Nice handoff there on that drive. Kristen Newton shoveling it in there, and it's 31 to 28 Huskies. Your second nature if you're Odoro is to help on the drive, but no one's going to be down, be back, get in front of Donovan Klingon for a better way to, to put it. So he's wide open. Carter launches from downtown. Oh, the iron kind. It tried to wiggle its way out. But the veteran and player of the year candidate that uh, tied the game at 31. He's got to get it going too, Timmy. He does. So he, he had a really quiet first half. Didn't shoot it particularly well, but you mentioned this in the break. His success sometimes is predicated on Oduro being available. Absolutely. Caravan using the glass. And then was up the back of Oduro. No whistle. It's out of bounds. Last touch by Providence. So. Well, they're going to grant the ball to UConn. Spencer will trigger it in. I think if you're Providence, you got to go the way you went into halftime and into those timeouts, boxing out, putting a body on guys. You got to walk guys back, especially with playing in the game. Spencer. Look at that. You got to find a body, Tim. You can't just out try to out jump this UConn team. You know, rebounding has been problematic for Providence. Ken English talked to us about that today. He said, we got to rebound better yeah. tonight to have any chance at all. But you have to do the job before you can get a rebound, and that's finding a body and walking guys back. Maduro again goes with a pump fake. Oh, that's a foul. Oh, boy, it is. Yeah. That brings a wry smile from Klingon, but he's headed to the bench, and, and Danny's letting him have it.
Yeah, technical foul on yeah. Van Hurley as well. He earned it. He did not. That was that that was uh, <laughs> one of those long distance yeah. technical. <laughs> That's Cross. one that he got that one with choreography. Yes, he did. Because he could not have been heard. No. But one thing about Dan Hurley, he's <laughs> always going to earn his team. He, he wears his emotions from his neck yeah, he does. to his wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierre cannot collect the, the freebie. It's almost as if there's a lid on the cylinder for Providence. Well, Ron Groover it's saw something on the yeah, baseline, Tim, and he walked down and gave the technical. He hasn't stopped barking. I give Gruber some credit. He let him go after the first technical. He, he allowed him to uh, yeah. lay into him a little bit more without the second being picked up. Five minutes, four fouls for Klingon tonight. What you have to love about Dan Early is that even when Klingon comes out, could have been maybe a silly foul in there, one of the two, however you want to look at it. Yeah. Still encouraging Klingon as he, he goes to the bench. You know, that... that when you have support of your coach, even when you're in some foul trouble. Yeah, Oduro now. It's three in a row he's missed. Yeah. Pierre missed his as well. It says a lot about Hurley's maturation, too, as a coach. We talk about players and how they mature. But as a coach, to be in a position to win a national title and continue to get better for your guys, I mean, it's commendable. Well, if you're expecting him to suddenly... Now that he has some, yeah. <laughs> if you're expecting him suddenly since he's got a national championship yeah. in his yeah. hip pocket to stop being the underdog with a chip on his shoulder, you know, the other Hurley, so to speak, forget about it. He's going to be the same yeah. Danny Hurley he's always been. You're never going to, you never question his love for his players. He is loyal to his players. 33-31, 10 in the game now for Oduro, and that's after three misses at the free throw line. Important now for Josh Oduro to play smart. Right now, Danny Hurley and his bench are, are trying to get that next foul on Oduro. Caravan. Off the heel. High rebound. Look at Floyd. Get up. Such a great athlete. He reminds me of some of those Arkansas two guards in the 90s. Carter. Well, he wanted that one, and he induced that foul to go with it. And uh, Stefan Castle is going to pick it up. That's his first of the night. Kim English is so animated on the sideline, yelling at his guys, run, run, run. And I don't think you have to say it more than once to Devin Carter. But either Corey Floyd Jr. either. They want to get up and down the floor. You remember the, the way years ago, people like Robert Shepard and Mayberry and Day would rebound it yeah. for Nolan Richardson? Guards the best two out. guards could get up there and help their bigs with rebounding. It's, I'm talking about when they're no, no. doing the Corliss Williamson era. Yeah, it's so important for your guards yeah. to come back and, and help rebound because you're not taught as a guard to pass out another guard. I mean, I, I, Floyd just amazes me, and his numbers are legit. It's not a surprise. This guy gets up and gets a ton of rebounds through the course of the year. Nothing different for him tonight, number 14 in black. Two and a half minutes gone by. Flyers up by three. And that three ball is rattled home by Castle. Got to do it. Now, he's really struggled from downtown this year. Maybe that's ominous. 12 on the game for him. Oduro for three. Hits the long rebound off the deck. Samson Johnson there to pick him up. Carter finds the lane. Oduro trying to follow. It goes the other way, and that's four on Oduro. I'll tell you. Going for the offensive rebound. Again, I think there should have been a foul call on Devin Carter. It's it's carbon copy the last foul that Oduro got here. Could have been a travel to start, but got a bump. And then now here comes the over the back. And again, carbon copy of his third foul. But just mentioned, you got to stay on the floor. It's it, it, the, the other team... The staff is trying to even this thing out with Klingon on the floor. That, yeah. as a player, Oduro has to be smarter. And that puts a lot of pressure now on Castro, who did play well when he came in in the first half. And he's got a couple of fouls, too, number 30 in black. On the switch, Floyd now with Samson Johnson. Castro works in on Castro. He was wise that time not to pick up the foul. Spencer! Castro will get a foul here. Over the back, and that's number three on number 30. 
Castro, another guy, has to be smart. They get very, very, very thin, Providence, if Castro gets into some foul trouble. Well, that's number three. I'd say with 16-22, that officially puts him in foul difficulty. And his coach is going to talk to him now. He's got, he may have some blood. Yeah. Took the worst of that. Yeah, in the chops. Trigger the ball in from the baseline now with 20 on the shot clock. Tied at 34. Newton will do the honors. Castle was looking for the dribble handoff. No one really looking towards the basket. Oh. Now there's an answer for you. Stefan knocks it down, and we had a whistle to go with it. Let's see what this is, is all about. That's Jake Pierre and Tristan Newton just chopping it up a little bit. Yeah, I think they that, just gave him a warning, perhaps. I like that. Yeah, no call, but just a warning. I like that. You know, the alternative is technicals, and, yeah. and we've seen those fly around too much this season already, but these two were chirping away to start the game. Well, the Huskies now have regathered the lead by two. <laughs> and Hurley already with the technical foul, so he may not be quite as demonstrative as the norm moving forward. Castle is on a personal 6 nothing run to make it a 37-34 game. Carter altered that shot because of the size. Castro with the putback. Castro's got to be strong. Go up and try to dunk that. Gets it to go, but. And we got some perspiration on the floor, so they're taking some time to wipe it up. And it looks like uh, while they're doing that, a little free timeout coming their way. The basket, you would think it's a, it's a 15 or 20 point game. Absolutely. For UConn, but. You know, you got to give a lot of credit to Providence. The foul situation, they're not as deep as UConn, and they are right there. Uh, he's getting maximum effort from his role players, Kim English. Yeah. He's got to be happy with guys like Floyd, Jaden Pierre. Castro is giving good minutes, albeit with three fouls himself. And there's a little back and forth going on now with Gaines and Samson Johnson. Gruber gets involved. we got double technicals. Yeah. They had given him a warning before. And, and, and again, it, you know, people will say it's they gave different players warnings, but you can't give You can't give warnings to all ten players in a game. You got to play the game And you, if you see your teammates getting a warning, you got to know the refs are getting tired yeah. of stopping and, and you guys jawing at each other I will say this though Tim having had a lot of experience in this matchup as a player this is what you get as we talked about in the open mm -hmm. the rivalry of providence and yukon well the loser here what it is is connecticut because samson johnson's technical it's his third overall i mean that's three fouls on him to go along with Klingon sitting with four uh you know ticket games you can handle picking up a technical Beautiful move. Everything but the finish. Yeah. He just got too deep. Corey Floyd took it in too deep. I think he was looking for some contact by Caravan, but he just slipped by him. There's no one there to create contact with. Johnson with a nice pass inside to Newton. There's Caravan. Oh, Spencer with a great rebound. And he's rejected by Pierre. Uh, that was some move. He went behind the back on the baseline with the dribble. I mean, he looked like a flying Walinda <laughs> going into the lane for that rebound. He kind of came out of nowhere. Hey, look at this. And then he just goes kind of a little abbreviated uh, that Michael Jordan move against the Knicks. Not quite, but change directions. 
Spencer. Uh-oh, got crossed up with Castle that time. He did not anticipate that drive. Haynes oh. has his pocket pick. What a job by Newton. Run down, though, by Castro, and he's wow. fouled by Castle. So a break for Providence. And Johnson is slow to get up after a collision on the baseline. That, that was such a great defensive play huh. by Newton to not slap at the ball. He just took it. This is what you talk, taking oh, somebody's man. candy right there, Tim. <laughs> Hands of Velcro. Wow. Three bodies on the floor there, folks. Welcome to the Big East. Old and new. I don't care for, again, I, you know, they've, the game has been called beautifully. And, and I think sometimes as a player you think, okay, they're going to let us be more physical. But anytime you slap on the arm, yeah. you reach in, they're going to call that. Well, a lot They'll let the contact with the body, Tim. But anytime you start reaching, it's an easy one. When the game lacks artistic impression, sometimes the best officiating comes when the game turns into a physical affair. Carter from... The parking lot off the heel and off the top of the board. It'll go the other way That might be the most open shot. He'll get the rest of the night. I mean, that's a Devin Carter shot though We've it seen is. him take those throughout the season and he's made his fair share But in these type of games, you know, you need higher percentage. It's, it's about what Kim English shows at shoot around today We need to be efficient. We need to make the right decisions 26 total fouls three technicals in our game tonight. Castle goes crossover, count it, and a foul. Such versatility and dexterity in that young man's game. That's four on Castro. Timmy, I, I, I heard games called when I'm just a spectator at home. They were calling him Stephen Castle. I think they know his name by now. Yeah. And if they don't, they, they will after this game. It is Steph Castle right at you to the chest of Castro. Boy, right in front of our eyes is turning into such a wonderful, wonderful young player. Now this puts uh, English in a real predicament. Mark looking over there at his staff. He's got some veterans, former head coaches on that staff of his. Nate Tomlinson, Tim Fuller, Dennis Felton, who was an outstanding coach at Western Kentucky, later at Georgia, won an SEC tournament title. And Tim, here's the issue for Providence. UConn is used to playing like this with Caravan as their five man yeah. because when Samson Johnson in foul trouble, when they did not have Donovan Klingon, this was their lineup a lot. Yeah. So they're comfortable. Yeah. Again, too much dribbling by Dual and a pilfer. Newton with numbers. What a defensive play. Inside by Pierre. Out to Spencer. Off the heel, run down by Carter. And they're out of the gates. And that's an offensive foul on Devin Carter. Yeah, just a little out of control. Another hey, technical uh -oh, foul. Yeah. This time they're going to light up Kim English. He didn't like the call, nor did Carter. Not sure who got the tee. Might have been Kim because he didn't like this call. I think it was Kim English's bench. Yeah. Again, these calls are so subjective. They have really boxed in officials on what call to make here. We heard the beginning of the year that this was 95% of these calls yeah. would be against a yeah, defensive player, and now it hasn't turned out to be that way, so I understand why coaches are getting so upset. Yeah, they're crediting the bench with the technical, but Kim definitely said something. So it may well now we're being told more specifically yes, that was but it was an assistant coach yeah. that said something. So four technicals now. In the last five minutes and 28 seconds of this game. This is not what you draw up as a game plan. Four technicals, 40, uh, both teams under 40% from the field. But if someone said, choose a game on the calendar for these numbers to show up. This would be it. This would be it. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what it is. Yeah. It, it, you know, the thing about both of these teams, Providence, they've been holding opponents to under... Well, 43 44 percent all season long and UConn is right there with them Well as the game has gotten as coaches would say mucked up 
It's an 11-2 run, very quietly, an 11-2 run here for Connecticut. And this guy's the reason, really. Castle, look at him. Nothing you can do with him. He's taking the game over. He has. 44-36, largest lead of the night. But that's pretension. Yeah. And yeah. there's no pretentiousness happening with UConn this season. You talked to Coach Hurley about that today. He, he's more hungry and, and doesn't assume anything, doesn't expect anything other than just hard work from his team. And, and that's what helps you dig these type of games. Oh, what a move by Pierre. That's a great yeah. response coming out of a timeout. Used his body as a shield, went to the offhand, and got the bucket. Right, 44-38. Right now, to me, the, the the refs are paying attention to not so much the physicality of the game, but the verbiage. What's happening verbally with the players? Who's talking to who? All right, my question to you is this: With 12 and a half remaining, how long can you afford to go without Oduro if you're Kim English? And oh. another foul spotted, and that one will go against Spencer fighting through a pick. Before the basket by Jaden Pierre, they are minus 16 with Oduro on the bench. Yeah. So that tells you how important he is to... See, so, yeah. There you go. I kind of think Klingon, whether he plays or doesn't play, is not nearly as important as whether Oduro does in the rest of this game, yeah. as far as the two bigs go. Because... And that's not to take anything away from Donovan. It's just Connecticut can get away with it without cleaning. They, they've proven that. Yes. I don't know that Providence and especially Carter can. Uh, right now, it's the 6-5 and under league <laughs> happening. And, and, and Caravan is a giant out there. He is. A little motion. Look, Spencer will launch from three. Carter blocking out. Another outstanding... Oh rebounding guard and again all the way to the rack wow. he thought there was contact no whistle that's interesting out of bounds it will go to providence and uh devin getting some consolation from his coach a few years ago and, and really did a nice job we had conversations before he even hired kim english and yep. what kind of coach he wanted yep. and he's got the right guy i think uh, there's a beautiful inbounds pass spencer will get caught reaching in on gains but listen the way they're shooting free throws, just foul them and put them on the line. I mean, both teams have been struggling at the free throw line all the way through. Spencer picks up that foul. Mike Trangisi, the former Big East commissioner, played a strong role in that, too. He's yeah, the, so locked into the, the yeah. uh, Providence program, always has been. The, the commish is a legend in this yes, area he is. as well. And not his putting. I can uh, <laughs> not necessarily his yeah. putting, but he, as a commissioner, he has really helped. Let me tell you something. He knows basketball oh, big he time. he does. When Mike Slive and Greg Sankey, the former commissioner and now commissioner of the SEC, were trying to shore up their league's woes in basketball, Mike Trangisi was hired to be a consultant for them. Yeah. To help them find yep. coaches young and new. In fact, he played a role in Rick Barnes, one of the guys Absolutely. that was tutored, English tutored, by uh, Rick Barnes, the former Providence coach. That's one of the reasons Tennessee got him, was because of Mike Trangisi. Newton running to curl, and that's going to be a block against Ticket Games. And now the sensitivity is heightened by the officials. They yep. want to make sure they clean up anything that might have worked physically in the first half. It's not going to work, but I, I agree. Ticket Games kind of leaned in. He wasn't in a good defensive stance chasing Newton around that. Look, the ball handling off that curl. You know as well as I do, social media just works this way. People are going to be saying after this one, oh, the refs, my God. No, no, no. They, they, they called this game the only way you can call a game yeah. like this. It's been, I think, as you mentioned earlier, beautifully called. It, yeah. Even with the technical. I stand by that. I think, you know, in the day and age of where someone gets fouled hard and they're throwing flagrant ones all over the place, and there's technicals. They resisted the urge early to call technicals. They only called them in this game when they had to clean some things up. You got a veteran crew, I think, still with the technicals. They've done an awesome, awesome job. It's noticed a lot more by fans when teams are also struggling at the line. And at different times, both of, both of them have. Providence is 4 of 11 in this half at the line. 
UConn's not missed at the strike. Five out of five. Carter's got to get the ball. Pierre from downtown got a pick from Carter. And now Carter runs down the offensive board. You can't allow Cam Spencer just to stand there and face guard him. He's got to go get it. Yeah. And a no call there on that post up by Carter. Look at him stay with it. Floyd comes away with the loose ball. Perrin. I like that. Three recycle opportunities here for Providence. Good job by Barrett. First block. Nice pass. And again, unable to reel it in. Ticket gains. It's on the deck again. And we've got a tie ball. Arrow is to Connecticut. <laughs> Just bodies on the floor. Well, the colors are right. Red, blue, and black tonight. <laughs> On the floor for both of these teams. Be some uh, whirlpool action overnight for both of these teams. That possession lasted an exhausting 47 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Ethan Cooperson all over it. Yara lost it. Poor pass that time by Newton. Carter, oh boy. Just as he was tripped or slipped, the pass was given. It was a two-on-one breakaway, and Carter threw it, and he was on the deck. I think we 10:48 remaining, and based on the flow of this game, it may take a while. And the problems at the line, we'll see if they continue. Hey, Tim, they, look, I'll send a text. They'll keep the bar open for you, Timmy. <laughs> I, 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 we get it. Well, uh, you know, the, the new Svelte Timmy B, that I, I don't partake nearly as much. Friars now with four fouls on Castro and Odoro. Again, I asked the question, how much longer? Yeah. Right? The four for Connecticut looks like a lot, but the two, especially Odoro, that's a big one for Providence. And another missed free throw for the Friars. Five of 14 in this half. Caravan. Newton with a follow, and he's pushed. Didn't need it. He was underneath the goal. That was one of those. They got a little too aggressive and picked up a personal foul. How about the go against Floyd? His first foul. How about the heads-up play by Newton? Though he doesn't, he doesn't bring this ball down. He catches it and goes right back up. He feels the contact and and almost like he stepped on his own player, which probably made it look worse than it really was. Yeah, it was the arrow. Two free throws. First and two. It's catchy, isn't it? I gotta be honest, as a player, these were some of the softest rims to shoot on. They were very forgiving. And really the only thing that's changed in this building since I played here was is the floor. <laughs> By the way, at the end of practice today, Coach Hurley welcomed me in front of his team and you know, threw out a, a, a I know you hated that. line of time, and I said, you I hated hope, that. I hope the iron is kind to Connecticut, and it's been <laughs> anything but. <laughs> Double jinx by yeah. Big Daddy B tonight. Yep. Beautiful pass. Ooh. Pierre finds his backcourt teammate, Carter. Wow. It's 47 to 42. That was a slow evolving play. You get that because the guards are staying out. They're playing the perimeter. No bigs to protect inside the paint. The more disjointed this game is, the longer Providence hangs in. Caravan off the line. Counted on a foul. That's a great interior pass to your center, <laughs> Alex Caravan. Again, he's the longest, biggest guy on the floor. Maybe ticket gains, but in terms of his ability to... To seal square, you you understand you got the point guard, Jade Pierre on you just throw it up there where only a caravan can catch it. Great delivery by Diara. The book on Alex a year ago as a freshman was boy boy, he's so good from the perimeter. He'll stretch the floor, enable those bigs, Sonogo and Klingon to have all kinds of room. Well, his defense was a problem. It it isn't anymore. He's playing much better defense this year. Well, he's more than just a scorer from deep. Oh, Carter lost his dribble, but recovered. Now he's in trouble. And there's a tur near turnover. Newton lost it out of bounds. 
Anticipation so good by Tristan Newton. Sometimes players stand still waiting for the whistle to be blown as if the ball was going to be out of bounds. Tristan Newton actively trying to cut that off. And here comes Josh Oduro back in the game. And Danny Hurley says, I'll see your Josh Oduro and I'll raise you a Donovan Klingon. Mm -hmm. Diara sits down and Barron sits down with two guards. Touch a chess match going on with both coaches right now. Oduro set for seven minutes and 13 seconds of playing time, 35 minutes of real time. Here he is, up and over. It is good. His feet are just so balanced. He just knows where he is. That's all over the painted area, right to Oduro. And there's Carter getting his hands in there like a gnat. Bothering the big fella will send him to the strike and it would appear that Stopping the clock and picking up extra fouls is not going to be an issue for either one of these teams The rest of the way it is settled into that kind of game the smart play though by Devin Carter only this second personal foul Really had no chance that low against Klingon Actually, Sorry, third. third. Yep but you know that Carter knows how to play with yeah. a great deal of intelligence. If you're him English, you really don't mind as much him having a third. And you give up a, a foul, but you also now send Klingon to the line after missing one. Well, eight players are on the floor for both teams with three fouls at minimum. 51 to 44. Decision making time. The premium right now. Don't be in a hurry if you're Providence. And Oduro challenging Klingon. Takes it right in on him. Wow. And why not? I mean, that can't happen. I know Klingon is worried about foul trouble, but UConn has to do the same thing at the other end. Give their big a chance to now put Oduro in the same spot he was in on D. Castle haven't heard from him in a moment or two. He dominated the first five minutes of the second half. Rejected here. Well, he stayed with it though. Out to Caravan for the three. Oduro battles for it. No whistle. And the putback by Klingon. Really nice job by both bigs. Timeout coming. English wanted a timeout. Or at least I thought he did. He certainly was giving a timeout signal. I think that might have been a delay a game. Yeah, yeah, it was a delay a game. You're right. Yep, and that's the officials uh, Ron Groover just told us. A really nice job by both bigs. Oduro not getting that last foul and, and clinging, yeah, continuing I, to fight. I really respected the no call, too, underneath. Oduro on the elbow. Well, you put him at the nail or at the elbow. Yeah. He's dynamite. Yeah. Absolute dynamite. Got a rebound if you're Providence right now. Find a body. This is when coaches say against a guy like Klingon, get your work done early, meaning don't let him walk you underneath the basket. Last six points for Providence coming courtesy Oduro. Standing room only in here, Timmy. Oh, and the anxiety. You could feel it. You could cut it with a knife. Spencer from the corner. Newton challenging and a foul on the deck prior to that. And Carter just really trying to talk to his guys to get them motivated. Don't reach, don't commit the foul when you don't have to. All right, so just around the corner. Wow. Youngster will be a Pisces, so you know you'll want to be loved. Newton misses at the line. That, they were shooting very well from the free throw line the first five minutes of the second half. UConn. Now suddenly they picked up Providence's issues at the strike. Newton is now five out of ten on the night at the strike. I'm trying to call a game and I got astrology, Pisces, love. Yeah. What, I, what, what is happening? It is almost eleven. It's Twilight Zone night. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Submitted for your approval. Oh. 54-48. Oduro flashing, he wants it. Has Klingon on his hip, though. 
Pierre waving off Duell. He wanted to clear out. Spencer comes over to help. Oduro thought about the three. Gaines will launch the tray. And Spencer comes down with a long rebound. That's a really good defense there. Staying in front of guys, activity. Wow. Pierre picks up that foul. Yeah, he's got to be careful too now, Tim. Yep. So Jaden Pierre with four. Carter needs his backcourt mate to hang in there. And he's gotten some outstanding play from Floyd, too, who's about to check into the game after Pierre picks up that fourth. So at halftime, I had a chance to talk to Eric Murdoch, one of the all one of my favorites. One of the all-time yeah, great priors. I love him. And we were talking about when, when we were in school in the Big East, this was my freshman year, we had six fouls. Yeah. This is a game where they, they could use it. <laughs> they could use six fouls. Back in the day in oh. Providence, starting at God, Eric Murdoch. Yeah. And uh, and he was and he was had to God. Yes, he was. <laughs> and of course later came uh, God Sham God. I remember that name too. Greats. Ernie Pops Lewis, who played with Del Ray Brooks and Billy Donovan. Come on, Dickie Simpkins, the animal, Robert Phelps. Number 34. The animal, Michael Smith. <laughs> Newton gets these to go down. And the lead is back up to eight. 12 points, nine rebounds for Tristan on what's been a tough night. Providence has always answered. We'll see what they have right here. You expect to touch. For number 13. Doubled by Spencer. Boy, he really surprised him, but he took it back. Carter is fouled. And that's from three-point range. Boy, what a big moment that was. Castle picks it up. I mean, that could have been a breakaway the other way. Now you get a foul from beyond the arc by Castle. That's his fourth. And three free throws coming. Yeah, take a look. I'm not so sure it was three. Yeah, it's a tough angle, obviously, with the stanchion in the way, but the, the officials are going to look at it. They're going to look at it. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be two. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think it was a three in, in real time. Oh, wait, 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 no, wait, wait. No. They are it saying three. it's three. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought it was three initially. Well, well, one ref gave us the two, and then one gave us the three. <laughs> uh, we got a late over rule. <laughs> one caught your eye, and the other I, one I, caught I, mine. Yes, what is this? <laughs> There it is. There's a look at your lovely lineup card. Uh, four or three fouls, a.k.a. foul trouble for both. Five players now on the floor with four. And the problems at the line absolutely continue. And again, this is a 70% free throw shooter. Oduro's 81%. He's missed three of his last four. I can't remember the last time I saw a team shoot 49 percent yeah. foul line. It's been such a College. physical game. You think fatigue definitely plays a role, both physical and emotional fatigue in uh, games like this. Yeah, you would think, Tim, but these these athletes are they really even though they're in college, they're world class athletes. I'm sure they these are. Guys yeah. can run and run and run. I just. I think I'm with you. It may be more mental yeah. than physical. Providence, right now. Is, Providence is 7 of 16 this half at the line. And they have the lead. If they make them. And if the game is moving at a snail's pace. Caravan running that curl, and he's doubled. Picks up the foul, and again, a wise choice as he's driving to the to the basket. They'd rather put him at the line than not. Wow. And well, that's number four on Carter. Yeah, that's where Barron has to raise his hand, Timmy. That's yeah. when a young player's got to know. You you got to know your your star player is in foul trouble. You raise your hand immediately. You got to keep Devin Carter on the floor. Well, now he knows that. He's exhausted all of his fouls if he wants to remain eligible. And already it's been a tough night for Devin Carter. Makes it a little 
tougher. Four of 14, 12 yep. points. Got seven rebounds, but it's been a tough night for him. In large measure because Odoro wasn't out there with yeah. him. For little, much of this game. Had to do a little too much, yep. I think. And UConn guarded yeah. it well. He did. And Newton is a tough matchup for him. Here's Odoro on the drive. Goes to that little fadeaway look. Wow. He's just devastating. If you can get it to him and he can find any room at all, you can just mark it down as a deuce. Now he's got to stay on the floor on this end, though. You know, he's not... He really isn't getting tested because they're not running anything inside UConn for Donovan Kling. It's a lot of motion. The problem is coming from the guards. Four for four since coming back onto the floor for Nacho Odoro. Newton has it taken away by Odoro. Out to Carter. Spencer's back. Mano a mano. Count it. And just like that, it's 58-54. Really nice job staying downhill. GR did a great job of getting back to help, but Providence is not going away. Well, you heard Danny Hurley say we're going to win with toughness and championship DNA. Well, I don't know. you got to stay on the floor. Four guys with four fouls for Providence. Who else is going to make a shot for them besides yeah. Oduro? That, that would be, I think, a prevailing question coming down to cases. Even Carter has been snuffed out. Newton being checked by Floyd. All the way, he found it. And one, and one as Floyd picks it up. You, you, you just can't allow Tristan Newton to get to that right hand he, the entire way. And they called this on the floor. Oh, they did, and Hurley can't believe it. I think this is the next stage for college basketball. And ones, he was in. He didn't put the ball down again, and he was in his mode of taking off to the basket. I thought that was a no-brainer as an yeah. add one. Well, they're talking about it. They are discussing it, and now they give it to him. Yeah. That's the right call. And, and Kim English a bit perplexed, and you can understand why. But I agree with you. This should have been an and one. Foul there. Yeah. And then ref. John Gaffney's fist goes up, signifying that there's a foul as he's in motion, Newton, to lay the ball up. Pierre, Floyd, Oduro, Carter, and Gaines are the five on the floor for Providence. Carter and Oduro have the last 14 points for PC. Diara, Newton, Klingon, Caravan, and Spencer on the floor for Connecticut. Biggest possession of the game, in my opinion, for Providence. You need a basket. The crowd is getting into this. Both teams are tired. Oduro for three. Why not? Off the heel, Carter gets the rebound. Working over Newton. And a foul. Wow, just baited him into that. Sure did. And I thought Oduro should have lifted a little bit because Klingon was jamming things up. But that was such a, a pro move by Devin Carter. And, you know, he just has such great instinct. It's like he knew where that ball was going to come off because Oduro's been so on it. The ball just was a little off the heel. And he anticipated where the rebound would be, and he got it. One of the best athletes in all of college basketball Devin Carter see him elevating didn't have to push off just jump straight in the air for that offensive rebound his dad Anthony we touched on before now Grizzlies assistant played 13 years in the NBA he knows how to be coached hard too with Frank Martin at South Carolina just as we speak of him kindly he misses another free throw it's not been a kind iron for him tonight by any stretch 61-55. See the free throw shooting story. It's, it's an ugly one for the road team. Gonna run and jump at Newton Orduro with the four fouls. Bold move. Klingon is rejected. Beautiful work. Boy, Orduro gave his all defensively there on the show and then coming back for a rejection. To no avail. What a blow by by Carter. Devin Carter. 63-57 with 3.55 of counting. And now you look up, Providence has made 
Six of their last eight, seven of their last nine. All Oduro and Carter. And that'll do it. Yeah, yeah. That's five on the air. So you'll have to go back into your pine just a little bit deeper, Jim English. Oh, baby. Bring out the bodies. A body count. That they had before he was injured. Well, there's a reason that last year's national championship team lost as many games as they did in the conference. Okay? League teams, and especially those closest to you, know how to play against yeah. you. Yeah. All right? And I think the first and foremost thing was render Klingon a non-factor, which for a bulk of the first half and a lot of the second half, he was. And now you got a, a scramble situation and uh, the game can get a little crazy. Okay, their two losses, Cam Spencer has has been shooting in the 20s. 20%. And, and to see that he's shooting 20%, one for eight from three, it, it's promising for UConn because other guys are helping them with this lead. Each team has scored 10 of its last 11 possessions. And there's Oduro with another. He is a perfect five for five, excuse me, for two. He missed that three, you might recall, but that's been it. He's just been money every time he's gotten the ball in this half. 20.7 boards, all told. But you gotta get a stop if you're Providence. You're running out of time here. It's, it's right there for you, but UConn is doing a nice job of just kind of meandering through the defense. Spencer gets the roll. It's the best way to describe it. They, like Spencer just meanders. He turns the corner. No resistance. Easy little footer. Probably his easiest shot of the night. Remember now, Pierre fouled out, so it's Floyd in that backcourt, along with Carter. Maduro going to take it on the deck right at Klingon and give it up on the wing. That's Barron. And there's someone else knocking one down. And that kid's taking some big shots in his past. And another one of those young men looks like he could play today. <laughs> he does. I did have some eligibility. Does get out, at times he does get out there with the team and still. Yeah. I've seen Danny Hurley play the scout team, too, from time to time. Oh, there's no contest. All the time. Yeah, well, I, look, he's good where he is right now. I yes, played against is. Dan Hurley. <laughs> Castle returns with four fouls for Connecticut. Keep an eye on number five. There he is. Then you defend without foul. Shot clock down to seven. And they're going to get a foul on Gaines. Yeah, he's fighting through a pick. He had his arm in there. English doesn't like it because they were well down in the shot clock. Didn't need it at that stage. But uh, Gaines picks it up. Only five seconds on the shot clock when the foul was committed. And that's four on ticket Gaines. You just, when, you, when you're playing against Tristan Newton, you got to be smarter. He's He's got these cute little moves. You know, he knows how to get into your body. He knows how to sell it. Not surprisingly, when Ticket Gaines was in high school, he was known as Big Ticket Gaines. 22 double-doubles, four triple-doubles, three quadruple-doubles. There's only one Big Ticket. <laughs> That's Kevin Garnett. And yeah. You, you got to change. You got to abbreviate that name, which he did <laughs> smartly. Just Ticket. No longer Big Ticket. Yeah. Just one of two. It remains a two-possession game. But this is what we're talking about with Tristan Newton. He's got a double-double in, in an ugly game, if you will. Yeah. He just, just keeps prodding, and he's a leader of his team. Boy, that's Castle. That's Castle off the ball with Carter on a slip. And that's five for him. So Stefan is done for Connecticut. And that's an offensive catalyst lost for the remainder of this game. Over two and a half hours so far this game in actual length. Again, it's going to come down to you got to make this next free throw, but for Providence, can you defend? Yeah. Stop without fouling. One big stop. That's it. Boy, yeah. One out of two again. Man. 68-63. Spencer with Klingon with him. 
about that. Oh, Klingon may have gotten away with it over the back on Oduro, but it's cleared by Carter. And he is going to relentlessly attack the 10. He wanted that one all the way. And it was costly. He flat out made up his mind he was going to take that shot. UConn took the quick shot last time. Let's see if they uh, milk the clock a little bit here. Yeah, this is a, a free throw shooting competition the rest of the way for UConn. Caravan off the curl. Up against the clock, Oduro Gotta brings go. it down. Gotta go. The hour could not connect under a minute to play. It's all on Providence right here. Can cut it to three or two. Carter all the way to the rack. Oduro rejected by Clinton. Huge defensive play by the big brawny Bristol kid. Carter is down underneath their basket. He is. Has to go down. Yep. Yeah. He had to. Yeah. Kim English is still begging for. A foul and why we didn't get one on this end of the floor for his Friars. He has backed off now and they're going to tend to Devin Carter. Uh, this is what you get when you have a guy like Donovan Klingon in the game late. Terrific defense right here. And I, and I and I get the no call on Carter. That's just good defense. Man, could have had a little body on the putback by Oduro, but it was a good block. Maybe a little body to go with it. Odoro has fouled out. That's his fifth. I think he had to take it. You know, Baron, Rich Baron is telling Odoro no, but he needs to go over there and then take the foul if yeah. you know, I mean it's look at that. Most in Big East this year. And oh by the way, uh, Xavier and St. John's <laughs> put on a similar display. Well, a few of the Connecticut patrons are slowly making their way to the exits. But uh, it's still very much in doubt. I still, you know, it's interesting still, and we, we talked about it. Providence is the best at keeping teams to under nine assists a game. And right now, you, they, UConn has six assists on that's, the night. That's amazing. One main field goal. That, that just, that should tell you a lot about their defense. And again, regardless of the outcome of the game, I think we've learned a lot about Providence under Kim English. And, and the news, even though this will make them three and four in their last seven games, I still think the news on them is good yeah. overall, where this program is. Look, Devin Carter had an off night, six of 18, still 18 and nine. Oduro was in foul difficulty much of the game, which affected Carter's play. And they're, they're not built like UConn. They're not that deep. You know, this is... A UConn team that can play a variety of ways, and they showed that tonight. Carter all the way, and he's fouled. Well, there was no doubt he was going to take it there, just as he had made it his mind before he did again. Look at live action up. You know, it's hands around the ball. It's I, I'm, look, I'm standing by my stance earlier. I thought this was a well. Officiated game. I agree. I really do. Yeah. These are hard games this time of year in this conference well, to keep under control. Well, this is January the 31st, and we're, let's see, Eastern time. We're very close. We're within 45 yeah. minutes of February. <laughs> we're about to get into what we call the dog days. That's it. Okay. And the Huskies are the big dogs, and uh, they, uh, they had to be prepared to be just that tonight. And as Hurley said in his huddle, win with toughness and championship DNA and I'm sure that's what he's going to be saying in his press conference after the game 20 points 16 this half for Carter as he finally sits down and a quick foul given up Providence has uh, gotten so deep into their their bench that Luke Fonts the junior from Portsmouth, Rhode Island has come into the game. Castro just fouled out. Devin Carter's dealing with a hit pointer over there, looks like, on the bench. And I think Raphael has just learned that that's it for him, so he'll come out. 
Uh, and for Providence, by the way, they're going to need to have him healthy for the next game. And judging from uh, the tumbles he's taken tonight, uh, a visit to the chiropractor may be in his future. He's trying to go back in right now. He he's is. over there telling Kim English, I'm not done. Yeah, he's going to get back I mean, in there. The toughness of Devin Carter. What heart, you know? Really. He is taking a beating tonight. Hit hard that last play. Man, this kid's toughness is. It's something you can't teach, Tim. Wow. 20 of 24 this half at the free throw line for Connecticut. So this game has been won by them really at the free throw line. But they had their fair share of misses too, particularly early in the game. Floyd on a blow by against Diara. Nice work defensively. And that was Jalen Stewart that got a piece of that. And now on the other end, a coronation for the kid from Seattle. And Connecticut will survive with toughness and championship DNA. Tell you, that was such a hard-fought game. That was one of the grittiest, toughest games I've seen in, in a long time, Tim. I want to 